Okay, so if you're following my PlayStation setup guides, you'll notice that I've covered Duck Station, I've gone through PCSX2 and RPCS3, and let's not forget about EPSXE, which is today's setup guide. So in this one, I'm going to be showing you what plugins do. We're going to go through the full configuration, which is very confusing for some people out there, and I'm going to get a game up and running for you. So if you're interested in using this emulator, which is EPSXE, rather in Duck Station, then check this one out. Okay, so first things first, before I start today's setup guide, if you like what you see in today's video, make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation on my channel, which I upload every day pretty much. So we're looking at the very awesome PlayStation emulator. What we're gonna do is just grab the latest version of this over on the EPSXE website. And the latest version of this is 2.0.5. And if you get any issues downloading this, there's an alternative website here. The link's going to be in my description. And you can download the same version from what I did to get this one today. Okay, so once you've downloaded your emulator, it's going to download into a .zip, as we can see just here. If we just double left click on that one, you'll find the contents of the emulator inside. You've got this folder structure. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder on my desktop. So I'm right clicking, press new folder, and I'm going to call this folder EPSXE. Or you can call it whatever you like. And I'm going to just press control and A on my keyboard to highlight everything and just drag it into that newly created folder. So once we've done that, we can now delete that zip. And if we go into that folder we just created, we're going to have the same file structure here, or rather folder structure. So first thing we're going to need to do is add some BIOS files, just like DuckStation, uh, this emulator needs BIOS files to run. So you can check which files you need on the website for this emulator. But once you've got them, you just drag them into this BIOS folder. And once that's done, what we're going to do next is just head over to our website. And this is the best plugins collection I found for this. So what plugins are, are literally plugins to get your video working to get your sounds working and if you've got a cd rom drive on your computer if you're using something a little bit older then you can actually use plugins to get this working too so in some ways it's a little bit like pcsx2 so what we're going to do is just download this epcsxc plugins collection and once you've downloaded that it's also going to be in a dot zip we're going to go back to the epcsxc folder on the desktop and just go inside plugins and just like the bios folder inside you're going to find a little random file just there for example i've got remove.me we don't need that so we can delete it and we're going to open up that plugins pack we just downloaded which contains dot dols and everything else and just again press Control and A and drag all of those into that plugins folder. And that's it for now. So also what I am going to say is uh, this emulator supports ISO images as well as .bin images. So as we can see, we got ISOs just here. So if you've got an ISO image, just pop it in here and obviously get rid of this erase.me. It's another random file we don't need. What I'm going to do is just create a new folder inside of this and just call this bin not bun but bin <laughs> so what i'm going to do next then is open up that bin and i'm going to drag my game which is crash bandicoot inside of that bin folder and here we go dot bin dot q now it's going to be the same if you've got your games in iso format so just drag them into isos so next thing we're going to do is right at the bottom we're going to find epcsxe.exe this is the executable which is going to open up the emulator and here we go now if this is your first time doing this you should have a little window pop up which is asking you to select the plugins if you don't then just go to config and go to wizard guide and you can start this process like this now what we're going to do is just read through this if you've got an hour of your life to spend <laughs> 
but I'm going to go to config and we're going to select SCPH101 US as it says it's recommended so just select that and press on next now the next thing we're going to do is configure the video plugin and the one everyone recommends is the top one well, the second one down from the top which is Pete's OpenGL and this is a very famous one people swear by this we're going to keep this one highlighted and press on next next thing we've got is configuring the sound so again we're going to select the top one just there direct sound driver 1.0 now as i'm selecting these if these plugins don't work for you then you can go back to the wizard and you can check out the various other plugins that you've downloaded but i'm going to use direct sound driver 1.0 and press next and what I was saying just a minute ago about using your real PS1 games rather than just files, we can actually use this through using a plugin for CD-ROM. I'm not using that today, so I'm randomly going to just select what is already selected really, which is the second one down, press next. And finally, we got configuring the pads. So I've got my Google Stadia controller connected. I'm going to go to controller one. And it's a simple case now of mapping out your controller, which corresponds with the original PlayStation 1 controller picture. So just go through each one using your mouse and cursor, and then just press in on your buttons on your controller. And it's that simple. Now, if your controller doesn't respond to any of this, then if you go to where it says direct input, you might want to try selecting X input once you've configured your controller just press on ok and next and that's it it's all fully configured and complete now before i boot up my game what i'm going to do is go to options cpu overclocking and making sure times one is selected uh, the recent version of this has been reported to have black screens and crashes so what i'm going to do is yeah just make sure cpu overclocking is selected to times one so next thing we're going to want to do is actually load up our games. So we're going to go to file and we're going to go down to run ISO and we're going to then need to head over to your installation folder, which in my case is on the desktop. And then if you're using an ISO image, then just go inside ISOs and select your game. But for me, as we know, I've already set up a bin folder and here's my game and the file I'm going to use is .bin. And that's it for today's setup guide for this pretty awesome emulator for PlayStation 1. So like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, be sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like it really helps my channel out. Plus it gets you retro emulation content pretty much every day on my channel. Also be sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.